Steelworkers. All right, now, now you sound like steelworkers. <laughs> Listen, I, I can't tell you how honored I am uh, to be here with you all today and to bring greetings and solidarity on behalf of my union, the United Steelworkers. And I want to thank my friend and, and colleague, President Renfro, for uh, the invitation to be here with you all today and say a few words. And I also want to extend my thanks to the Executive Council uh, for the invitation to be here. It's just, it's just really an honor. So are you excited for this convention? All right. I have to tell you that I absolutely love the theme of this convention, Grow, Rise, Together. And it's such a powerful and really important message as we're in this moment right now where workers in this country are really powerful and we're really leaning into our power. And so if you don't mind, I would like to take some time this morning to talk about power. Is that okay? Yeah? That doesn't sound very enthusiastic. I would like to take some time this morning to talk about power. Is that all right? All right. Brothers, I love you. Where are my brothers? Brothers, I love you. But I'm going to direct my initial comments to the sisters in the room to start out. OK. Where are my sisters in the room? Raise your hand, including my sisters on the Executive Council. All right. Give it up for our sisters. So in our union, we refer to our sisters as women of steel. And we wear that moniker proudly. I am a proud woman of steel. And we talk a lot about knowing our power. How many of you, sisters, in this room know your power. How many of you know your power? Raise your hands. Okay. So this is the interactive portion of the convention. I want you to yell out, what is your power? Just yell out words. What is your power? Sisters? Passion? Integrity. All right. What? Confidence. I, I love it. Oh, I love it. Excellent, excellent. Some really, really, really great powers in this room. So for me, I say that one of my powers is my stubbornness, though I'm not sure that my husband sees it as a strength. I come from a family of very strong-willed, stubborn Jamaican women. That's right, my Jamaicans in the house, all right, that's right. Big up. Um, and my husband calls us the generals. And that stubbornness runs deep, really deep within me and within my family. Some may see stubbornness as a negative. But for me, it's a motivator. It helps drive me and keeps me laser focused on my goals and not get too distracted by the things or people that may try to throw me off focus. And that served me really well in this job. And it's kind of a lesson, right? Some of the things you may think of as negative aspects of yourself are actually some of the things that make you most powerful. And I have to remind myself about that daily when I ask my seven-year-old to do something and she immediately tells me what she would prefer to do and it's not the thing that I asked her to do. Those of us who are parents understand what I'm saying. In that moment, I'm screaming in my head, right? You know, what the, what the hell? You gotta do what I tell you to do. But, She's actually demonstrating a boldness, right? A power that I really hope that she takes with her into adulthood, even if I don't love it right now. 
So know your power is a reminder to us sisters, and no offense to the brothers here, but sometimes we women are less confident than men, not only about what our power is, but that we actually have power, right? And I'm on this board, and they had us do this exercise where they asked each of us to name our superpowers. The men, no issues. Boo, boo, boo. They were naming their superpowers quickly, fast. What do you think happened when the women were asked to name our powers? What do you think happened? It was slow. The responses were cautious. And after that exercise, some of us talked about how uncomfortable naming our superpowers made us because we didn't want to come across as cocky or arrogant. But you know what that exercise did? It made us really think about ourselves and how we show up in the world and what we bring when we show up. And that's why I asked you all, sisters, to name your powers. It's okay to admit you're the shit. I, I was told I could curse. It's okay. It's all right. You don't walk around being like, I'm the shit, but sometimes you gotta be like, I'm the shit, and it's okay, right? It's okay. That's right. It's all right. And that's the first thing that I wanna impart to all of you today, and it's the best advice that I ever received from one of my mentors. In every room, in every room that you are in, show up as yourself. Be authentically you and all that comes with you, right? Particularly as it relates to the fights that you all fight collectively every day as a union. Things like a good job that allows you to put food on your family's table, send your kids to school and retire one day and leave a legacy for future generations. Good health care so you don't have to make the choice between paying rent or paying for your medicine, right? And this one that I know is particularly important for all of you in this room, which is the ability to return home safe from work, as you're experiencing right now, record levels of crime and violence against letter carriers kind of around the country. So these are the things that you're using, those powers that you named and the ones that maybe you didn't name. These are the fights that you're using those powers to fight. So it's important that you remember those powers, and that you show up as yourself in every room. And sometimes, sisters, I will tell you what, sometimes we need to remind our own fellow sisters about what our powers are, right? What their powers are. Because sometimes we need a little help fixing our crown when it goes askew, right? So. Stand up in your power and remind your sister when she needs a, a help knowing what her power is. You know, I, um, I became international vice president of my union in 2019. Thank you. And I'm the first black woman to ever serve on our union's executive board. And another power that I tap into is awareness. I'm aware that I'm the first black woman to hold this position, but I can't be the what? That's right. Our union does not grow if I am the last. Our movement does not grow if I am the last. So that awareness is a power that I have to hold with me every single day. So I'm constantly seeking out ways to uplift my sisters, to use your knowledge, 
power and incredible abilities to not only make this union, the letter carriers union, but the labor movement as a whole stronger. Know your power, my sisters. Now I have to, uh, I want to pull the brothers into this next, the second thing I want to leave you all with, and it's a reminder that telling your stories is one of the best ways that you can fight to achieve the things like passing the Protect Our Letter Carriers Act. A big part of my job that I do in D.C. is overseeing our union's legislative and policy work. But the most effective, effective voice in our toughest fights is our members meeting with policymakers in D.C. and at state capitals to tell their stories. These are some of the times when our members' powers is on display in the most perfect way. It's when they use the things that they shape in their lives each day, from their jobs and their families with their communities, to tell a story that is uniquely theirs. And I know that you all use your powers in the same way because my badass sister, Corey Blaylock Keller, who many of you know, I see her in action a lot on Capitol Hill, and I've seen her throughout the years. And you know what she is? That's right, clap for Corey. She's incredible. And she will tell anyone that the secret sauce to so many of the victories of this union, the letter carriers, is all of you. So keep telling your stories. That's right, clap for yourselves. You are the secret sauce. So keep telling your stories. The third thing I want to leave you with is a reminder to use one of the most important powers you have, and that is your power to take your voices to the poll in November and vote, okay? We are now 91 days away from Election Day, and it's so important, so important, that we work to elect folks from the top of the ticket all the way down to the local races who share our values as working people. This is a values proposition. We all know what our everyday lives look like. We all know the real in terms of what's happening in our communities and in our families. We all know what we need as working people to survive in this country. So when you go to the ballot to vote in November, you vote your values. You vote for the things that you fight for every single day in our union. Health care, retirement security, the right to join a union are the top issues that we hear from our members every single year. Those are our values as a labor organization, as a movement, those are our values. That's what you bring with you to the ballot box, and you all play an outsized role in this election because Election Day is November 5th, right? But in so many states across the country, voting actually starts in September. And you all play a huge role when it comes to the mail-in ballot and making sure that the integrity of our democratic system is upheld. So I want to give you your props and a thank you ahead of time for the role that you are going to play, letter carriers, in this election. So thank you. The last thing I want to leave you all with today is just a reminder that others are watching how you use your powers, and they're learning from it. I mentioned this seven-year-old who lives in my house. Her name is Eden, my daughter. And, you know, she's seen and, and heard me speak before a crowd and at conferences and rallies, you know, throughout the years, but I never realized how closely she was watching until two years ago at our international convention in Vegas. And it was my first convention in this role, 
and it was just before the start of day one and my family's on stage and we're taking pictures and before we start, Eden says, Mommy, I want to speak at the mic. I have something to say. And she said it just like that, that seven-year-old confidence. I have something to say. So my husband and I look at each other and I explain why she cannot speak at the mic. And she, of course, gets upset. So I say, well, what would you like to say? And she said, steelworkers, thank you for your work, and you need to care about the environment. <laughs> so letter carriers, I tell you this to remind you to not just know your power, but use it wisely, okay? That's right. Because our people are watching. It's important for the people in our lives, big and small, to see us doing powerful things. It's important for us to see each other doing powerful things. Eden never questioned whether she could or should speak on a mic in front of 5,000 people. Why? Because her mommy does it. And that is power. So that's right. So for all of us in this room, it's not just our kids and our grandkids that are watching. Let's keep the progress going. Let's keep knowing and using our powers until we have a labor movement where everyone sees themselves and are not afraid to step up to the mic. So letter carriers, are you ready to use your power? Letter carriers, are you ready to use your power? Grow Rise together. Thank you. About a letter carrier cheer for rocks. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. 